Here we go in this problem. We have p squared times p all over p to the negative 1. Now, we could simplify this first. We could actually do this two different ways, maybe more than that. Um, but I kind of always get into the habit of taking care of my negative exponents first. And that way I can see exactly what's going on. So because we have a negative exponent here on this um, denominator, that means that it's in the wrong position. It truly needs to go up to the numerator. So if I were to correct all of this, then I have p squared on top times p, and then if I move this denominator up to the numerator, that would be p to the first power on top, which is just p. Now we are multiplying like bases, so we're supposed to add the exponents. 2 plus 1 plus 1 would make p to the fourth. Now that's just one way that you could do it. There are other ways, so as long as you're using your exponent rules, it should not matter. Here in this problem, we have m to the fifth raised to the fourth times m all over m to the tenth power. The first thing that I notice here is that we have a power to a power, which tells us that we're supposed to multiply that. So that truly is m to the 5 times 4, which is 20, times m all over m to the 10th power. Now, we don't have any negative exponents here at all. So let's go ahead and try and simplify. If we look at just the numerator, we have multiplying like bases, multiplying the base of m. So we're supposed to add the exponents. 20 plus 1 would give us m to the 21st over m to the 10th. Now we're dividing like bases. So our rule says that we're supposed to subtract these exponents here. So that would be m to the 21 minus 10 would be the 11th power. That's how that one would simplify. For the next one here, we have a lot of different things going on. We have numbers, x's, and y's. Let's look at these one section at a time. And the reason that I can do this is because wouldn't it be the same thing as if I said negative 6 sevenths times x squared over x squared times y cubed over y to the fifth. This would be the exact same thing because remember when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So if you saw something like this, you could put it together so that it looked like the original problem. I'm just going backwards. Now we don't have to do that every time. I just wanted you to see why I can work with the numbers and then the x's and then the y's. So doing those one at a time, let's look at our numbers first. We have 6 over negative 7. Well, there's not much that can be done there. The only thing I can do is move that negative out either to the top or out to the side to make it look a little bit better. As far as the x's, we're dividing like bases here. So x to the 2 minus 2 power would make x to the 0. And remember, anything to the 0 power is 1. Well, we don't have to write down the 1 because that's just going to be 6 times 1, which is 6. So it's not going to really make any difference. Another way you could look at it is this is a common factor on top and bottom. It's as if we were canceling out a common 2 out of a fraction. When Anytime you have the same thing in the numerator and the denominator, then, and, and it's a factor, that's important also, then we can go ahead and cancel that out. Now also we have our y's, y to the third over y to the fifth. So again, we are dividing like bases, which means we're supposed to subtract the exponents. 3 minus 5 would be y to the negative 2. Now, this negative 2, uh, as an exponent, says it's in the wrong position. That y doesn't belong on top. It needs to be brought down to the denominator. So when we simplify this, it should be negative 6 over 7y squared.